Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Ionic Show. My name is Ben. And I'm Max. And today we have a ton of things to talk about. We took a break, so to speak, not really. We were working really hard and kind of fell behind doing an Ionic Show. Yeah, we procrastinated a little bit. A little bit, but it's just because we were working so hard. We literally have like twice as many things to talk about today as we normally do. So we hope you have twice the amount of time to watch the show. And twice the fun. So let's get into it. Today we're going to start with the re reflection of 2014. <laughs> yeah, it was a huge year, our first year in existence pretty much, so we're going to talk about everything that happened. Especially, we're going to highlight the community. We have had just... We love our community, we love you guys, we love these awesome meetups that are popping up all over the world. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna talk about how you can start your own Ionic meetup or community wherever you are. Um, we're gonna highlight some cool Ionic apps. Yep, we've got the Electronic Frontier Foundation just released an Ionic app. Yes. Uh, we have a game. Uh, so if you if you ever wanted to build a game with Ionic, we'll show you uh, someone that did. Yep, and we're gonna talk about one of our own apps that we built in-house, the Ionic View app, which lets you preview your Ionic apps inside of an Ionic app. It's pretty sweet. And then we're gonna talk about Ionic beta. Ionicception. Ionicception, beta 14, the latest beta, the current beta, the last beta. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. And then um, Ionic Lab, a new service that lets you test cross-platform design tweaks all in the browser. It's really sweet. Um, crosswalk, yeah, which crosswalk. lets you basically be, uh, put Chromium in your Android apps to actually make them fast. Uh, and then finally, a really cool splash, uh, an icon generated tool that helps you just build all the like assets for all the different phone sizes that you need. Uh, so we've, we've helped you out there. Yeah, um, I think that's about it. We'll probably get into a few other things. We're also drinking tea today. Switching up a little bit. We're relaxing. So let's get the show started. All right, let's talk about 2014. It's yeah. A crazy year. So 2014 was basically Ionic's first year in existence, and it was a huge year. Uh, we went from zero to one of the top 50 most popular open source projects in the world on GitHub, with nearly 13,000 stars. Like we're so many. It, we never expected that to happen. We're super proud. We're super happy. Uh, that's incredible. Um, not only that, but there were over three hundred forty thousand Ionic apps built from from you guys in the community. Just it's just nuts. Yeah, and and just jumping off of that, it's all because of you guys. I mean, it it's because of you, the community that has that has sprung out this year and and built meetups and done talks and gone to conferences and built apps, shared them with people, um, wrote blog posts. I mean, like I've learned, I've learned just as much from you guys as, you know, hopefully you've learned from building with Ionic. I mean, yeah. I think we joke sometimes that like the Ionic community are better Ionic developers than we are. <laughs> and it shows like you guys have built some great apps. You've pushed the limits with, of what we thought was possible with the framework. And that's like all we could hope for. Um, and we're being blown away by where all of these like community meetups are starting up. And we yeah. have like over 30, I think it's approaching 30 international like official Ionic meetup groups. We have we have Ionic Argentina, we have Ionic Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Ionic Kenya, Netherlands, Paris, Philippines, Puerto Rico, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, there's just so many meetups and uh, meetup groups. And what we're doing is, if you want to start up your own meetup, just get in touch with us. You can tweet at us, you can email us, hi at ionicframework.com, and we'll help you get started. We'll usually give you some logo assets. We'll, yeah, you'll build them a sick logo. I will build you your own Ionic logo for whatever city or country you're starting your Ionic meetup from. I mean, we'll help you out, we'll point you to where to get some swag. We're going to be building, that's another thing. Yeah, we've got an Ionic store coming up, and we'll have a, uh, not only will we have some cool shirts and all that stuff, but we'll have... Uh, and actually like swag box, like a starter kit for like a meetup. So that'll be really cool. Mm -hmm. So thank you. We're, we're so humbled by everything that you guys do. You are the reason, you are the, the backbone to why Ionic is so, so amazing. So thank you. Yeah, so we think 2015 and beyond is really the year for hybrid apps in Ionic. And we are, we've got so many things planned. We're excited to have you guys along for the ride. And we look forward to learning a lot from you and being humbled by what you build, so. Yeah. So let's talk about some some new Ionic apps. Yeah, so one of the really cool ones that just came out last week uh, is built by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Uh, and this is a great, uh, great uh, company that has basically um, tried to protect our rights in the digital era. 
and I've donated donated to them in the past. I'm super humbled and, and proud that Ionic was was picked by them. Yeah, this one was near and dear to your heart. Yeah, so basically the app just helps you uh, get notified when there's uh, uh, events going on that you can help spread the word on how to protect your digital rights. And they wrote a great blog post about how they ended up only deploying the app to Android because there were some terms and conditions in the Apple developer license that they didn't agree with. And I think it's a really good discussion that we should be having. Um, you know, I think we all love the native distribution model. Like it, it, it's a great market. It's a great way to get your apps out there. But it's not all roses. And we should always be thinking about how we can improve the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's what we're doing here with hybrid apps. We're trying to take back some of the, the control and put it in our hands uh, so we don't have to kind of get stuck in each platform but can work across all of them. Um, yep. So so they have uh, they wrote a great blog post. You can see it at EFF.org. Um, I think it's definitely uh, required reading for any mobile developer. Yeah. And we're, we're again, super we're honored. proud and honored that they used Ionic. Yeah. So um, next app is one of the first, although first that I'm aware of, games built with Ionic. At least it's the first time we've featured one here. So the game is called Convergence. And it's uh, an app built with Ionic from uh, one of our Ionic developers out in the UK. And it's really, really simple, but it's really, really fun. I play it pretty often. I actually play it when I'm like traveling. It's kind of a mindless, fun game. Basically, what they did is they stripped out all of the Ionic like um, UI, like SDK components that you get, and they built their own little system of like blocks, basically, that converge to a point. And then you have to guess where all these like blocks are going to converge to. And it, I've gotten I've gotten pretty far in it. It's really frustrating when you don't get the right spot and you have to start back at zero, but like it makes you want to play it even more. So it's one of those games where it's like you kind of get hooked. I'm um, trying to see how far you can get. Yeah, it's um, like super simple, but uh, really simple. Very rich. It's got really cool colors. It's really fun design. Really well done. Kudos to the to Greg who made the app um, out in um, Britain. Yeah. Yeah. So. <clears throat> That's a great app. If you've ever thought about building a game with Ionic, it's it's definitely one to check out to show you how it's done. It's called Convergence. Convergence, yep. So the other one is an, actually an app that we built called the Ionic View app. And the core idea behind the Ionic View app is it lets you preview and actually share ready-to-go Ionic apps with other people around the world. Um, so so that's like the core feature set, but I think uh, it's it's also a an example of what's possible with Ionic. So definitely go and check out the Ionic View app. The beta is uh, on the uh, on the Apple App Store right now, just because we had some native plugins we're working on. Um, but the cool thing about the app is is you can go and have a client or a friend check out the app, even if they don't have any SDKs installed. So so if you're yeah. testing locally and you're developing on the device, it's like it's not super useful for that process. Um, but it's really better for getting like you know a client to check out the app, to test out the user experience, test out functionality. Um, we actually load all the plugins that you need uh, locally, so we're expanding the, the plugin set, but we should support everything. Um, it's still in beta, so so we're still adding lots of stuff. Yeah, you might find some bugs, and we do have a repo for it for submitting issues. You can just, I think it's just called Ionic View Issues repo um, mm -hmm. on GitHub. So if you find a bug with it, submit it. We're actively working on it, fixing it. Like Max said, it is in beta, but it's really fun. I mean, like bouncing off what you were saying, like you can do all these fun things, but really, where at least where I get the value out of it is, it's actually just you're previewing it in a phone as though it were a native running app. You have access to all these things, and it just feels like it feels like an app. Yeah, um, like imagine you you even if you use like uh, you build an Ionic prototype, you can just send it and have like everyone on the team playing with it as if it's a real app. Um, yeah. And not only is it like a quick prototype, but you can actually then go build the full thing from your Ionic app. So hmm. uh, it's a great tool for for just doing that even. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so check out the Ionic View app. Oh, um, it's only in the iOS store. I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah, that. I mentioned that. We're, okay. we're, the Android one's coming soon. We use these apps that we built, uh, like the Ionic View app, to make Ionic better. So sometimes they take a long time, or they only come out on on iOS first because we are actually using it to improve our Android support, uh, which is why the other one's been a little bit slow. But mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Ionic gets better when we build these things, and they add value to you guys. So definitely check it out. Cool. So I think we should talk about beta fourteen. Yeah. The last. The last of the betas. The beta to end all betas. Yes. So where do we start? There's so many changes that have happened. It was a long time coming. We know everyone was really anxious about it coming out. I think we took a good month or two to yeah. get it out, but it's it was for a good reason. We worked so hard on it. We um, 
Uh, we should start with Angular. We updated to Angular 1.3. Yeah, so we updated to 1.3, which just adds some good performance Im improvements. Uh, and there's just some changes, some minor changes that you might need to look into if you're migrating from 1.2 to 1.3. But in general, everything should, should work. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest change is probably the new transition in navigation system. Caching. Yeah, so we've made Ionic feel much more native by uh, not destroying previous pages. So when you navigate forward and you're in a list and you keep going further and further and further down the navigation chain, uh, you go back and your everything was like how you left it. So the scroll position is the same. Whatever you're looking at is the same. This is how native apps work, and it's how we should have done it from the beginning. So mm -hmm. we redesigned it. It's much faster. Uh, performance is much improved. The transitions are better. Um, so that's been a huge improvement. Uh, and then and then swipe to to go back is coming soon as a yes. because of that feature. So uh, we've also dramatically improved platform styles. So Android will look more like the new Android L style, um, and iOS will just you know, be iOS because that's kind of how we started. And to jump off that a bit, like as far the thing, the way that we're looking at like platform styles is we're not trying to make it look like your standard Android app or your standard iOS app. We want it to just feel at home in whatever platform it's in. So we're not going to be making crazy changes to Ionic proper. We're going to be doing little things that make your app just feel at home if it's displayed in an Android device. Right. So you can add your brands, add your styles, and it will yes. fit into the native like kind of look. But it's not just going to be the native kit look. Yes. Like we don't think apps should look like that. You should have yes. your colors. You should have your own touch because that's what the biggest, best apps do. They customize it. Yeah. And so we always want to make that easy and, and focus on that. Yeah. Um, platform styles, transitions, caching, lots of stuff. Tons of stuff. Read the release notes. We are working quickly on going to 1.0, the release candidate for that after this. So there won't be any other betas. This is the final release, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Awesome. So let's talk about Ionic Lab. So Ionic Lab is a new feature that we released about a month ago, which basically gives you access to, uh, in Chrome, or whatever your web browser is, we like Chrome, to preview your Ionic apps as you build them uh, as what they would look like as an iOS device and as in an Android device, um, just all in the browser. Um, and it kind of allows you to see all the cool little platform tweaks that Ionic is doing between uh, between Android and iOS. So for instance, you'll see your uh, header text move to the left of the screen on the Android, whereas on the iOS uh, like screen, you'll see it in the center, which is what iOS prefers. Um, so really, really useful. Um, and you can access it through the command line tool. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's kind of a, like a, an easier way to do the like device emulation. Uh, Chrome has device emulation, mm. which, is, which is nice. But uh, the cool thing about this is it actually does two devices at the same time. And you don't need to like, you know, set the device in the resolution. It just happens automatically. So if you want to do this, uh, you basically run Ionic Serve and then dash dash lab. You get all the live magical live reload stuff that we added, um, but this one loads in kind of like a separate tool. And uh, this is just the beginning of Ionic Lab. It's uh, probably going to become this like really really cool uh, kind of in browser development environment. Yeah. Uh, and so this is really just feature one, like the be very beginning of what we're doing. One of the things that we want to add is like um, like mocking. So like if you clicked on like an input, it would actually like show you a, a fake little like keyboard or like yeah. things like that that actually make it feel like you're actually interacting with a with something that's on a phone, but it's just in your browser. Yeah, like geolocation, camera stuff. Mm -hmm. All this stuff should be like developed, like you should be able to use those features. Uh, even though you're not running on the phone. Just make development so much easier. So that's really just the beginning. Try it out. Download the new command line tool and run that. Cool. Um, so we need to talk about crosswalk integration. Huge, huge update to Ionic. Just that happened this past week. Yep. So crosswalk is basically Chromium that runs on Android. So instead of the crappy old, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it's crappy because it's just terrible, the old Android web view, which is the bane of every mobile developer's existence. Uh, we've gotten rid of that. You can use Crosswalk with Chromium for your for your Ionic apps now. Uh, so we released a, a huge blog post about this uh, last week, and mm -hmm. it covers all the details. It's still in beta, so follow the blog uh, because it tells you how to get up and running and trying this out. Everyone that tries it is just blown away by how much faster their Android apps are. Um, so we want to kind of move beyond the old kind of myth that Android's slow. Well, it wasn't a myth because it was true with their terrible web view. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of 
It's... You can tell I've got a little resentment built up. <laughs> <laughs> so the new Android web view with Chromium is so much faster. It'll make your Android apps way better. So definitely use it yeah. uh, and check out the blog for the full details. We're really excited about that. Yeah, it's, it's a huge release. So speaking of releases, we also released, and this is with the command line tool, this new splash screen generator and icon generator for your apps, which like holds a, a special place in my heart because as a designer, I'm constantly designing splash screens for mobile apps that we're building here um, and, and icons for them. And if you've done it before, then I don't need to tell you how absurdly confusing and annoying and difficult it is to get your splash screens to look right and to export them right, all the different sizes, all the different icon types for between iOS and Android, like it's a mess. And so what we did is we built a service that basically generates them for you. Yeah, you just run a command, you put the source file, it sends it up to our server, we splice and dice and do all the magical stuff and you get back a full set of images that fit all the phones. So you probably don't want to use this if you've got like a really like specific design that yeah. can't be like cut. Yeah. But most apps should have like a simple splash screen where the image is in the center and we're just going to fit the rest of it to, to match. So um, it's perfect for that, uh, for generating app icons, which can be kind of annoying. Uh, it does all of that for you for both iOS and Android. So huge time saver. At least, and especially if it's, you know, your first version that you just want to get out and you, you need to go through this whole process of doing the apps, app icons, doing the splash screens, like this just does it for you. Much quicker to get that proof of concept out, get it in the app store quicker. You don't have to worry about it or think about it. Um, so that was kind of the point that we were trying to help that that yep. pain there. So and and again, this is in the command line tools. So uh, mm -hmm. definitely go and update to the new version. Uh, I think you also need the new version for Crosswalk, and you need it for Lab. So yeah. definitely go and update if you haven't. Yeah. Um, tons of new features in there. So that is pretty much it for the splash and icon generator. Yeah. And I think I think that's about it for today. That, those are the big things we wanted to talk about. Yeah. So we are gonna hold off on talking about Ionic IO because we talked about it last time. We're still working on it. Working it's getting on it. closer. Some people are using it. Uh, we're just polishing things up and making sure that we've got the kind of backend infrastructure in place so we don't have to make big changes there in the middle of like people using it. Mm. Uh, so we are um, we're also hiring some people to help us build that out. Yep. Uh, some backend developers, Python, Django, uh, Go, you know, Heroku. Uh, so if you like any of that stuff, definitely check out our jobs page because we're hiring for those roles right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be sweet. So we'll probably dedicate the whole next one to that, and you'll be able to play with it, and we can finally stop, you know, stringing you along about how awesome it's going to be. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that wraps it up for today. Um, again, just to reiterate, it's been a great year. Thank you, the community, for, for supporting us and for making Ionic what it is. We're humbled by you. We're excited by all the things that you're building. Keep sharing it with us. Keep teaching us. Um, and... And yeah, it's just yeah. I mean, like you know, we we are going to focus on trying to make you guys as successful as possible. So we want to share every blog post you write, every cool app you build. Uh, we really want to make sure that when you work with Ionic and you build cool things with it, you are more successful because of it. So yes. that's going to be a focus of ours. Uh, we started doing a little bit of this with the trusted partner program. So trying to make sure that there's if there's Ionic work out there that we get you know a group of people who are really good at Ionic and get you work, which has been a, actually pretty successful yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be doing way more stuff like that. Yeah. So um, thank you to the community. Thank you. Thank you to Ionic Argentina, Ionic Belgium, Ionic Brazil, Ionic Canada, Ionic Colombia, Ionic Germany, Ionic Ireland, Ionic Italy, Ionic Kenya, Ionic Netherlands, Ionic Paris, Ionic Philippines, Ionic Puerto Rico, Ionic Spain, Ionic Switzerland, Ionic Toronto, Ionic Turkey, and Ionic UK. See you next time.